How's it, my friend? Yeah, good. How are you doing? I'm so lucky. Uh, everybody, this is Jason. Jason, everybody. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> so, yeah, man, we've been threatening to do a, a podcast together. Um, we've been dying to talk a little bit about uh, our success on one of our businesses together that you're a partner in. And I think today I would love to unpack behind the scenes how we've built uh, an online store that's managed to do 10,000 orders in under 12 months. And um, I want to be as raw, authentic as possible. And uh, I think there's a lot of people who will gain a lot of value from your knowledge around managing, running, operating uh, an online business. And on our side, obviously on the marketing front um, of it as well. So without any further ado, I don't know where we want to start, but maybe we can show, yeah. show off our beautiful award there. Ground Zero, hey? Um 10,000 lifetime orders. Um, I think we actually did this in Show like, the camera then. like six months. Crazy. Yeah. So 10,000 lifetime orders. Um, six good. months, I reckon. Um, we're sitting on, if we had to call it, a, around about 25,000 lifetime orders now. Yeah. So the award came a bit late, um, obviously yeah. from the US. And, um, you know, it's, it's a... It's a big accomplishment um, to get an award specifically from Shopify on, on the efforts. And, and sentimental, you know, when, when, when I got into the e-com space, I was never married to a specific product. Yeah. I was married to a gap in the market. And the gap in the market at that point was perfumes. And, you know... I had no real desire to learn about perfumes. I had to learn very quickly, mm. but I wasn't married to it. And, you know, you, you live and you learn and you, you form this magical team that surrounds you in your everyday business. Yeah. And, you know, you, you're part of that team. So, you know, the agency is part of that team. Um, we've got our warehouse of staff, you know, of five people that work at our warehouse that um, we've grown significantly over the last 12 months. And I feel that, and I, and I don't know what your opinion is on this, but I feel that most people that come into the e-com game come into it thinking that it's easy. And thinking that it's just like a quick little jaw, you know, um, sit back and watch the money ping, ping, ping that they see from the US, you know, these yeah. grow your business quickly. Well, I think that's exactly why we're also doing this uh, podcast today is because we want to be as raw and authentic as possible. And I think a lot of people look at the success and think that it's overnight success. But in reality, yeah. how long has it taken you to build the skills that you've built? How long has it taken yeah. us to build the skills that we've built? Yeah. What people don't understand is that I started building my skill in 2011 when I was the first person to run Facebook ads in South Africa you know so this has been a 13 year journey for myself and then the company is v8 as well you know we started that in 2018 so we've been honing in on our skills since then it's been a, a sort of six year journey and same with you you know when yeah. was the first time i mean just think back what is the first time that you i mean yeah i mean if we if we go before like online entrepreneurship you know yeah. which was uh, my first store was around like six years ago maybe seven, but I mean, from a product perspective, and I mean, that's really my skill is like entrepreneurship, product, product design, importation, et cetera, et cetera. And we talk, you know, 22 years in the tech space. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very um, lucky to have the knowledge that I've learned over those 22 years. And over the last six, seven years that, you know, we, we've been running an online stores, um, I've kind of like zoned in on the platforms that we've used in that time. And we've identified the correct platforms and we've identified platforms that just don't work for us. And um, I think, you know, there's a marriage of, you know, different widgets that that work along on that so that's part of my journey of you know entrepreneurship um, e-com space and e-com space is very different to 
um, you know, your 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 normal day to day running of a brick and mortar. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah. I think uh, the the long or the short of it, in conclusion, is is that you know it's it's not as easy as people think it is. Even though there are gurus preaching that you can build a business overnight and retire in a few months after, and like with any business, like a brick and mortar, uh, it's going to require effort. It's very different, but it still requires the same level of input in a way uh, we were chatting about this earlier before and we said like people don't understand that an online business yes people claim that it can be a side hustle people claim that they only work an hour or two uh, on the business a week maybe but i can tell you now the people who are claiming that that is possible are people who have been doing it for four or five years and have reached a point where they have the skills and the knowledge now where it takes them a fraction of the time to set up what needs to get set up in order to get the sale and do the fulfillment and everything else. Because they've learned so much over time, they've managed to reduce the actual time it takes to to make an impact. And um, at the same time, they had to put in all those hours. I think late nights, early mornings, figuring out how to move shit around on Shopify themes um, I mean, I started on Joomla. So when I when I built my first website, it was a Joomla 1.5 website, and I literally paid someone to and I sat next to him for two days because back then there was no YouTube videos. There was some Google articles that I could find. There was a few, but I just paid someone to sit next to me for like literally two days and say, "Teach me how to do this." Shit. Yeah. And I think people underestimate that all the skills that you've been stacking, skills that we've been stacking, has paid off. And it's the same with another business called Glute Nutrition. Is that relationship, you know, we have 25% equity in that. But the point is, is that that is not an overnight success because that took that business owner also six years to learn his skills. And it's taken us again, seven years to hone in on our skills. And now we have an amazing business together, same as Sentimental. But none of it was just created from nothing. It's not an overnight success is, is really the point I'm trying to make. And there are many, many challenges. And I think depending on where you find yourself in the journey, some people might be sitting there going, I don't know anything about e-commerce. So for you, the journey will be a little bit harder versus someone who has been doing it for seven years. That should be normal. It's like you can't be Picasso overnight. You're going to have to start somewhere and you're going to have to make mistakes. You're going to have to put in the hours. You're going to have to learn the skills. You're going to have to learn how to mix the paints. You're going to have to learn all those things over time and you can reduce the amount of time it takes to learn those things by having a mentor and by learning from other people and maybe by hiring a resource but again it's still going to require time and money and i think people don't understand that and they completely underestimate how much effort and money and and time and energy it actually is going to take to build a successful business and they throw money at other people and go build that business for me yeah you know do the marketing and i want to be as successful but meanwhile, there's so many other boxes that they're not ticking that no matter how good your marketing is, no matter how much money you spend on yep. ads, or it will just never be the same business as another one because there's a lot of other boxes that they're just completely neglecting, that their experience level or that their uh, knowledge is just not acquainting for at the moment. And maybe we can talk a little bit about those boxes. If we had to unpack Sentimental yeah. um, and the success that we've had, what are some of the core pillars that you know we've managed to get right and built a foundation around what are some of the key boxes that we've ticked um that other people should look at ticking as well if they wanted to do or mimic sure. the success yeah so i mean i want to you know touch base and and rack your brain as well a bit on the early days of sentimental mm. right and the early days was really hustle yeah you know we hustled we jumped on an airplane when we needed to to go and source, to yeah. meet with people. We built up a team. And, you know, within our business, I'm very um, hands-on on the online store. And uh, from a technical perspective, um, I think, you know, I always say that the recipe on the online store for Sentimental is going to be a very different recipe be it marketing, be it apps, be it look and feel, be it product, um, be it logistics, to the next fragrance store out there. You can never replicate a recipe. And once you unlock that recipe, 
you plain sailing until you get to the next level, the next level of the store. A new recipe. And what we did in the early days of Sentimental was build the bank account. We we didn't, and and fortunately enough, we didn't need to pull money out of the business yeah. at all. We put it back into stock, we put it back into logistics, we marketing. put it back into marketing, and you know, staff. Um, today we sit with a warehouse. We sit with a half a million rand marketing bill. A half a million rand marketing bill. Um, with with obviously healthy ROAS yeah. that that comes with it, exactly. and maybe you can touch on on that as well. You know the 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 weight above you know spending and yes. getting in return. Uh, you know we sit with a logistics partners that are just unbelievable. Where we're getting parcels out within one to two days, um, countrywide. Um, I mean the list goes on, right? But I think the foundation of a store is the pillars of the apps that you have on it and there's certain applications that one would need just to make yourself different from your traditional shopify store yeah i mean i must admit that when i go onto an online store and then i see the shopify first of all i can see it, it's a shopify store straight away when i go onto a yeah, store same. but when i check out and i go to that generic checkout page yes it is a um eye opener for me how many people first of all are using shopify and it baffles me that they don't change that checkout mm. um experience pr process flow and experience right because there's so much that you can do so i mean specifically with with senti store we've changed a lot of our discounting structures our checkout uh, infrastructure the way that we present our payment gateways to um, the end user we try to make it as slick as possible click click go yeah um we've also got pillared apps that tell us what um you know from a finance perspective and i know that you drive a lot of that on your side but i mean it's you know an online store is analytical you're not always on the ground. You're in the cloud. Yeah. So every little click counts um, from a ROAS perspective, from a spend perspective, you know, from a return on investment perspective. Um, you know, there's certain discounting that Shopify can't do that we've made possible with certain development that we've done. Um, from a checkout perspective, the elasticity of checkout mm is there's certain things that we can do that is just not in the ecosystem of a generic Shopify store. 100%. And I think also that boils down at the same time to logistics and fulfillment. And I think a lot of people underestimate how much time is wasted in trying to get a parcel out. How many uh, of those things can be automated in order to streamline the processes? Because shipping... Yep. 10 boxes or, or 10 units a day is very different to shipping 300 100, a day. Uh, exactly. Um, and I think, you know, that is where you're obviously a, an amazing asset to the business. Um, and coming back to the analytical side of it is that we m monitor our P&L real time. Uh, exactly. Like that's, that's what a lot of business owners don't understand is that if people had to ask what is one of the key factors to the business growing obviously you need a good product i mean we didn't start with that because that's a given right you can't sell crap and get away with it uh so you need a good product people there needs to be a want and a need so people either need to want the product or they need the product yeah one of those two things if they if you're not ticking any of those boxes you're going to be in trouble so that's a given beyond that obviously you need to get eyeballs uh you need to get people to see the business because without that, you can have the best product in the world. But if nobody sees who you are, where you are, what you do, then good luck. Yeah. You know. So we've gone from a ten grand budget to literally spending this month half a million rand yes. in, in marketing, and that's not going to slow down because there's no data to prove to us that it should. Correct. Uh, we a lot of people would be, oh, we're spending too much. We need to cut a little bit of this. We need to cut a little bit of that. Oh, I've got an agency fee. Uh, let's just get rid of that. Rather than get someone in house. And that's fine. It's, sometimes it makes sense. But yeah. if you're not keeping analytical track, if you're not keeping your finger on the pulse real time, 
like if you had to ask me what yesterday's profit net profit margins are i can tell you yeah i can exactly. tell you exactly what the net profit margins were and i can tell you exactly what the total net profit was and i can already see today that we might not get to tomorrow's uh, benchmark but that's okay because i also know what's happened that might have caused that drop and i think that's where just a lot of people get lost and they don't know as business owners that someone has to take accountability for that yeah normally it should be the business owner if you don't if you as a business owner don't have the appetite or the skill to be that analytical with your numbers from what your gross margin is to what you're paying in, in transaction fees to what you're paying in shipping fees to what you're paying uh, other members in the team and how they're contributing either to the sustainability of the business or the growth of the business then you are the problem because most people think i'm going to throw money at it i'm going to throw money into ads and my business is going to grow revenue is going to come in and that's true most likely some revenue will come in but what you do with that revenue and how you optimize it in the back end is really what accounts to the growth because the only reason sentimental at least from my opinion has grown the way that it has is because every single month we do a proper uh, scrutinization of the PL and we go this month's budget where it was last month was 400 this month we can afford 500 let's Correct. go we need the rise where it was the rise of, of, of 4.5 or 5 last month because we're spending more money we can actually afford a rise of 4.3 uh, or 4 this month because it's not always about the ratio but it's more about the actual money that you're putting back into the business and i think people get lost in the in the in the finer details of oh you need a 5x rise or you need a 6x rise or you need or need this and i need this percentage there's so much more than just a percentage that's going to help you grow the business. But at, but at the same time, that ecosystem all plays uh, an extremely crucial part. And all of those different nuances and variables needs to be monitored and looked at and, and, and scrutinized and then optimized in order for the business to grow. So that was a bit of a monologue now and I apologize <laughs> for those <laughs> listening. But I get so passionate about this because so many people think I'm going to run Facebook ads and grow my business. And that's just... A, a, a stupid ass way of thinking about business number one and at the same time short-sighted right so short-sighted because the, it takes a lot more for you for the business to grow profitably that is correct i mean like whatever you do from a roas perspective or a poas you know profit on ad spend yeah. on on your side i'm and the team are on the other side negotiating with payment gateways you know negotiating with shipping companies you know bringing our costs down from 120 bucks to 60 bucks you know and 45 bucks a shipment um same with our our payment gateways you know we uh, when we you know any opportunity that we get in front of them is valuable opportunity and we've got such good relationships with every single payment gateway out there. And we nurture those relationships. Absolutely. All the time. And specifically from a marketing perspective. So, you know, like a payment gateway is great, but a payment gateway is even better when you can leverage marketing through them. 100%. Because um, there's a certain trust as well when it comes to a payment platform. Yeah. And when a payment platform has multis, multitudes of millions that use them and they see ads coming out of those payment gateways on your own brand it's trustable and we can talk about trustable when it comes to you know the south african market and e-commerce and the injection of e-commerce into south africa you know a buyer will pay today and expect it same day or tomorrow mm. otherwise they're not happy it's it's it's, it's non-trusting yeah e-commerce is non-trusting at the moment so you know, from a Senti perspective, we've got a, a, a fully fledged uh, customer service center. And I can tell you that the staff in that service center close their laptops sometimes at nine o'clock at night. Yeah. Um, and we in our customers' faces. You know, that, that's our rule. You know, customer comes first, customer experience. But on the flip side, we've got staff that have a turnover at our warehouse. So we've got people that work during the day and then we do a half night shift. Yeah. And that allows us to get the parcels out within the one to two days. Yeah. Um, a lot of people go, you know, nine until four, is close the is. doors, it is what it is, we'll get it to, to it tomorrow. In our, in our lifetime over there, you know, in, in our little world over there, we know that the first pickup happens at eight o'clock in the morning with the courier guy. Yeah. Then the second courier comes, then the third courier comes, then again in the afternoon. 
So it happens twice a day. So, you know, you're trying to beat numbers on that side, plus you're trying to beat time till your next pickup. And then from a warehouse perspective, you know, it's also stock ordering, you know, projecting, negotiating with suppliers, negotiating with suppliers which they do all the time. Um, and then also projections, right? I mean, this month, you know, you do X amount of bottles, five, 6,000, 8,000 bottles of perfume. But we know we're growing month on month. So like ne next month is 10,000 bottles, you know, and we have to project against that. God forbid you are down on your projections and you're sitting with a deficit of 2,000 bottles, right? Yeah, we've got so many examples of great businesses doing well until they run out of stock for two or three weeks. And that puts you so much uh, on the back foot. Uh, in fact, you're taking two or three steps backwards because yeah. the people who were ready, the, pe the people who you've paid for in terms of a click, in terms of a CPM, they've now taken the time to see the ad, watch the ad, click the ad. They have taken the time to look at the product, decide they want it, and then it's out of stock. Yeah. Or you forgot your system didn't say it was out of stock and they bought it and then you realized afterwards it was out of stock, and then, which is even, even worse. Even worse. And those things in itself, we've seen, for example, one client last year and it was in the apparel space. And apparel uh, apparel is, uh, is just a, a very difficult industry to to get right because you've got so many different sizes small medium large extra large then different colors and different patterns and some people prefer this some people prefer that so you always get left with like these odds and ends like I've got extra extra larges and I've got so a lot of money gets lost in stock that just never gets sold um, so to manage that is already tricky but the business was growing literally 20 30 percent month on month and as we reached it started on zero literally and as we got it to 180 200k we took a dip and it went back to 80 and it's purely because one popular item was out of stock and they couldn't yeah. uh, get it into the country for about three to four weeks so what happened was he went backwards in cash flow backwards in profit uh, actually ran at a loss obviously because of it and that puts you on the back foot financially. That creates more stress, more anxiety, more pressure. You start to think differently. You start to feel differently. You make different decisions because of it. So people don't actually know. Like, like you're out of stock. We'll fix it next month. No, you don't know the ripple effect that has got because that customer now has decided to buy somewhere else. Which means if he bought from you once and you had a good experience, he might have come back next month to buy something else. Now you've Correct. not just lost him in that moment, but you've also potentially lost two or three months worth of revenue because of the fact that you missed out on giving him a good experience. Yeah, absolutely. I, it talks back to, to, you know, like accountability and trustability as well. So, I mean, exactly what you said. It's a trust factor for somebody to come onto your site, to scroll through your catalog, to choose something. It goes to the cart, it gets abandoned once, it gets abandoned twice, and then they come back again and they purchase it and then it's out of stock. And you've lost them and the entire circle for life, yeah. you know. And, and that's exactly it. Yeah. I don't think all the business owners out there really truly understand the severity of all these small little things. Because to someone else, that might just seem like, oh yeah, it was out of stock. We'll, we, 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 it's coming in a week, just relax. Yeah. No, you don't know what you're doing to your own business and your reputation. Yeah. And I think alongside that, um, I would love to maybe also just unpack some of the challenges that we faced. Uh, because yeah, as much as the analytical side is important and uh, you know the actual platform structure in terms of apps and technology is important uh, there's a lot of challenges that we faced even though we've both had the experience like you've had your six seven years experience of the technical side of running a, an online store we've had our six seven years eight, eight years experience of marketing online stores we both business uh, passioneers, uh, we both enjoy business, but even though we've stacked skills parallel for the last six, seven years to create something beautiful, we've still had our challenges. Um, we've had our challenges in terms of offers in the market, we've had our challenges in terms of price, we've had our challenges in terms of conversion rates and what people want and what they don't want. And uh, Maybe we can just touch on a few things. Yeah, so I mean challenges, I mean, from uh, I think we've had a few hidings. You know, I don't think any business can be rosy every single day uh, from the beginning. Um, we've had our days where, you know, you go and plot around in the store and you break a few things and then things go south. And thank goodness the team are really, really good at fixing stuff. 
um, you know, we've also made some really bizarre calls, you know, and you, you, I mean, we we famous for one thing on our store, right? And it's buy one get one free. Um, that being said, you know, we as a team decided, well, maybe it's getting a bit old, you know, we change it, you know, change it up. And that was what about eight months ago that we decided to stick fingers. Yeah, yeah. And we felt it. The very next day, we felt it. And it takes time to reintroduce something like that again to get it to where it was. 100% because the market basically starts to get used to something. And ads. And I think what our conversation was, was use, you know, nobody pointed fingers obviously no. at each other. Like That's what I love about our relationship is that we're all in it together and we all fixed it accordingly. But transparently, uh, I think you, you were saying, hey, we need to update this. Uh, it's a bit boring now. Yeah. This changes. And I was like, hey, it's a bit subjective. Let's focus on the data. And then we had like one or two slow days and I was like, oh, maybe you're right. And then I caved. I, I gave in obviously and I said, okay, cool, let's change it. And then we both realized we were both wrong yeah. uh, ultimately because yeah. the data didn't show that we had to, ch to change it really. Um, you know, there, there's other factors that contributed to a little bit of a slower growth than we were, what we were used to. Immediately, we just went subjectively to the fact that it might be the, the DAFA. Uh, and we were a little bit naive. Even with our experience, we were naive yeah. to think that the data is going to tell a different story than what it was actually saying. And we were just completely ignoring the data at that point. And I think we have a, a cool understanding now between the two of the two, two of us is like that's the data you focus on this is the data that's we right. focus Correct. on Correct. Yeah. let's challenge each other's perspectives but ultimately don't change let's, anything ultimately the data is the decision maker yeah um, exactly even with free shipping that we do like mm. for example Chantal um, bless her soul she, she was worried about uh, the outlying areas and we're losing money and I was on holiday last week and as the message came through I got a bit of an anxiety around it. I was like maybe we are losing money like and I opened up the laptop and I sent and I looked at yesterday's P&L net margin net profit and I was like guys we're good yeah <laughs> Let, let's not stop it actually the, we higher than uh, we were before yeah exactly let um, the data tell us what to do and I think that is the number one, at least, lesson I want to share with people yeah. is that let the data tell you what to do as opposed to you subjectively uh, using your own experience to say, hey, I think we should do this or that. I, I mean, uh, I write I write all of this off as A-B testing, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, I love putting my fingers into the store and See I love getting a, um, a slap on, a the, slap wrist on well. the wrist as well. <laughs> um, and... I'm a lot better than I was no, before. Actually, I've actually been like an angel for the last like few months. But and that's why we're growing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, right in the beginning, you know, um, you know, this A/B testing of of applications, right? And you know, you test one carting software, you test another carting software, you test a discounting platform, you test another discounting platform, you remove one, you break another, and you get a call from Yandre going. Have you done anything to the store? And I'm like, no. <laughs> delete, delete. <laughs> and 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 um, and sometimes I haven't. But you know that just shows you that we've got the finger on the pulse mm. when it comes to analytics, right? I mean, another you know we we outgrew the space that we started Senti in, which was a garage, and we moved to our warehouse a few months ago. And we outgrew that in 30 days. And within 30 days, we outgrew <laughs> that warehouse. And, I mean, it's it's a bit of a bummer, right? But, I mean, it's also a hell of a good thing. A 12-month 12, a 12 lease, and then you realize 30 days later, it's It's more. just as good as, like, a storeroom now, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, and it's, it's not a small warehouse. I mean, it's yeah. it's significant in size compared to what we had. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it, it's just, like, life's curve, curveballs that you get thrown every single day. But, I mean, it's all positive stuff. It's all opportunities to learn. I think that's what people misinterpret uh, sometimes is people think, oh no, this is bad. This is going to be, you know, the end of the business. But in hindsight, you realize all of these challenges are opportunities to learning get better. And that does sound like a bumper sticker. I get it. But it's never been more true 
uh, at least from where I'm sitting, foresight and going, whatever we're going to face next, it's going to be an opportunity to learn and get better and improve our skills because ultimately that is what's going to allow us to build, build a better business. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what, what keeps us relevant in the market? You know, product innovation as well, right? So how, how many people neglect that? So a lot of people I've seen, and again, we've worked with, uh, not I don't know, I think most people probably know this who, who follow the brand and follow me, but there's people probably listening to the first time, but we've worked with over 300, 400 business owners in the last seven, eight years. And majority of them are actual e-commerce business owners. And one of the biggest things that we've seen that people neglect is they get a product they get the site up and running, they start spending money on ads, and then they almost sit back and just focus on fulfillment. It's like, yes, fulfillment is super crucial, but innovation is a constant thing. Like every month Absolutely. we're innovating, whether it's negotiations, whether it is figuring out where you can squeeze an extra penny, whether it's cutting an expense here so that you can put more money into something else over there. Like innovation is not just front end offers. Innovation is literally every single aspect that makes the business better, I suppose. Correct. Correct. Yeah, um, I suppose uh, that's, you know, the back end of sentimental as uh, like kind of a snapshot. And I'm sure that we can dive into a lot more detail when it comes to the different widgets of the business and in further podcasts, yeah. you know. Um, I think this was a good this was a good start. And uh, I would like to maybe ask, like, if you if there's someone there's definitely someone watching or listening going. I can maybe do that too. And uh, there is obviously a, a quantification process of what is the actual probability of you achieving the same level of success. And that depends on your resources, your skills, and so many other things. But what advice would you want to give someone, uh, at least from where you're sitting, that can help them get started with something that could potentially mimic some of the success? I mean, so as I said, don't marry the product that you are looking to sell. And I talk about this often, right? You know, you, you've you just had a baby, so now you want to sell baby clothes. Yeah. And then it fails and you become so complacent that you never ever want to do it again, right? And that's my first thing. Don't marry the product that you want to sell. Find a product that everybody needs at an affordable price point that you can get your hands on quickly or manufacture and you can get it out quickly. Um, I also I also think that um, you need the right team. So, you know, going into an e-com store by yourself, being the master of everything, you know, the doer of everything, it's just not possible in growing a business, maybe for the first month or two, right? Choose your team wisely. I mean, maybe we can touch on that. Like, I mean, you've been building your own stores uh, and it's been about a six, seven year journey in mm. some of the businesses that you've had. And we met literally having a quick coffee. Five, six years ago, I first spoke to Gilly actually, you know, yeah. around one of my stores, which did, um, we manufactured syrups for, yes. you know, the restaurant trade and, um, coffee trade and bubble tea industry yeah. and that business just wasn't where it needed to be yeah. at that specific time right but we met over coffee yeah a year ago and we stayed a year and a half ago actually yeah, yeah. and um how much quicker do you think you've been able to grow with sentimental by having the right team versus how you would compare that to what you were doing by yourself all the time it's uncomparable yeah you know you either a subject matter expert in what you do as a product entrepreneur, logistics, or marketing. There is no way that you can be a marketer, a product here, a logistics person all in one. And if you could, it's probably in the beginning when orders are slow. <laughs> totally, right? I mean, totally. But I mean, if you if we take a look, we've, we've got like a business group, right? Mm -hmm where we have core functions on that group. Mm. The guys are looking at ads all the time. There's no way that you as a single person can keep eye on that. And then Meta stops a Facebook like ad account because of a bank issue that, you know, has put like a block on your account and um, all the ROAS has dropped and you don't know why. That's very analytical. 
and that needs a dedicated resource on its yeah. own. Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, we've I, I, we've grown exponentially, and I think that you know the subject matter experts sitting in the agency side of things has contributed from a marketing perspective, from an email perspective, from a, a UGC co uh, perspective, um, which is also very important. Um, and then also, you know, we've got our staff at the warehouse, which has grown over the last year. And, you know, they've also grafted and they, the subject matter experts in mixing, bottling, boxing, sending, you know. And then we've got our technical resources that are really, really good at the finer widgets on the website, the logistics of the website, the automations of the website. You know, if something breaks, it gets fixed. Um, negotiations, you know, supply engagement. It's, it's a full time story. 100%. Uh, you know, yeah. So, yeah, I suppose anybody doing it themselves can get somewhere. I like to say that if. If you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go the distance, go together. And um, yeah. because of our skills and because of the strategic partnership that we have, we've got an amazing mixologist who's been doing this for years. Yes. We've got you and your technical experience has been doing it for years. We've got our marketing experience and, and business experience has been doing this for years. And I think collectively that came together and the stars aligned in order to build something beautiful. And I think a lot of people look past that and just assume, hey, I'm going to create a product, I'm going to hire an agency. And, and then, we're going to help it sell. Yeah, exactly. Um, so completely underestimate how much it actually takes and what it actually takes emotionally, physically, uh, in order to build something similar to this. But it is possible. Uh, and uh, I think the, at the end of the day, it's just starting. Yeah. Starting and learning and being okay to fail take the leap take the leap yeah cool you're not always successful in the first try right 100 percent. well i mean how many stores have you had before saying yeah a lot exactly mm. so with that said dude i really enjoy spending some time with you absolutely always a pleasure mm. um, definitely the first hopefully of many absolutely and um yeah for those watching listening all the best have a good one thanks jason cheers